see you this morning. I hope you've been able to get outside and enjoy the unseasonably cool weather we've had. And uh, last night we were outside having a bonfire and about 10 o'clock we started to hear some odd noises in the sky. And so I was puzzled and it sounded like fireworks, but I'm like, there's no fireworks around here. But I got thinking, Ivanhoe was having their Polish days and they do fireworks at 10 o'clock in Ivanhoe and we could hear the booming at our place last night because the air was so light and it was so quiet. And so an area that typically the wind blows all the time last night was remarkable and we were hearing fireworks from 30 miles away. I thought that was remarkable. As you look at our activities uh, today or this week uh, with church, if you're a visitor, you see the information there at 1bcm.org to fill out uh, a response or a visitor card. Uh, tonight, Hill Street Place at 5 p.m., if you're able to make that and be an encouragement uh, to those people. And then we also have youth group uh, as well. Wednesday, normal Bible study. You also see the details for a ladies' retreat and a men's retreat at uh, Bass Lake Camp, if you're able to attend those activities. And then here, a big week on September 16 through 18, and you see the details up on the sheet. Uh, there will be a food sign up for uh, some side dishes that we'll need uh, the church to help with. The main meal that we're responsible for will be catered in. Uh, but please see Cindy uh, in regards to signing up for some food. There will be a sign up sheet coming up next week for some food. But there will be other things uh, that are needed as well as far as cleaning and preparation for uh, that event. And then also we're updating the pictures. Uh, for the bulletin board and Koo has his camera here today so if your whole family is here today and you would like a, a photo uh, taken in the church uh, please see Koo in between Sunday school and, or between the church service and Sunday school I also have a thank you note from the Mickish family it says we thank God upon every remembrance of you Philippians 1 verse 3 dear Pastor Delich and precious saints at, in Christ at First Baptist Church Marshall. Marshall, thank you for your faithful prayer, support, and recent generous gift for the Wausau North Bible Camp. We thank the Lord for you all and your partnership with us here in the North. The new facility is coming along great, and we look forward to seeing some of your men here in August. What a blessing you all are in Christ, Rick and Jenny Mickish. Please stand with me as we sing, Come, the Fount of Every Blessing. Come, the Fount of Every Blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song. Song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. <coughs> thy good pleasure safely to. Wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. 
Let thy goodness a fetter by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. You may be seated. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this beautiful Sunday morning and for the chance to gather together as your children and worship you as our Father and our only true God. Father, as we gather for worship, please fill us with your spirit that our heart may be made one in love and faith. And please help us to remember your love and grace and to be faithful in our service to you. And Lord, please give wisdom to, and skills to pastor as he will be leading our service and share your, love, your words with us today, that his words may proclaim your truth and bless all of those who will be taking part in our worship today, that they may serve you faithfully and may our worship today please you, O God, and through it may we know your love more deeply. And we also pray for our church members who have been sick for a long time and we place all our sick friends under your care and humbly ask that you have mercy on them, touch them with your healing grace and restore them to health and remind them of your love for them and please help them to trust in you in, uh, through their suffering. And Father, we commit all our fellow church members under, uh, into your hands, trusting that you are at work in our lives. And Father, we pray that may all glories and honor come back to you in everything that we do together in this church here. And Father, as we continue to worship you today, please help us to worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Psalms 160. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pains of Sheol lay hold on me. I suffer distress and anguish. Then I call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when, even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. Why shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, <clears throat> in the course of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretched soul like me. I once was lost, but now am found. My eyes were blind, but now I see. His grace my every fear 
grace will lead me safely home when we chapter 18 verses 9 through 13 he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt two men went up into the temple to pray one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector the Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus God I thank you that I am not like other men extortioners unjust adulterers and even like this tax collector I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? John 1, 5 through 10. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 
If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sin, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Please stand with me as we sing Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin a double cure. Make me pure, not of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace, bow I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die, while I draw this fleeting breath. in death when I soar to worlds unknown see thee on thy judgment throne rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee amen you may be seated Please turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We have been, well, no. I have been taking my time with the first two verses. You guys have been patient with me perforce. Uh, these verses, I believe, are important in that they form a foundational piece to what Paul is doing in the book. It is because God is at the center of his ministry, at the very center of his life, it is because apart from God's call to us and apart from God's grace in us, and apart from the way that God sets us apart unto himself and also unto service, apart from these things, we've got nothing to do. We don't have a purpose, and we don't have the ability to do anything had we a purpose. But because God has called us out of darkness and into light, and because God has called us into that light and in that light unto service, unto great commission work, work that will have significance in this life and whose significance will echo throughout all of eternity. We need to be people who are set apart to him. We need to be holy. And that is what we talked about over the last couple of weeks as we've looked at this passage. As I studied this, I came to the conclusion that I can't do this. <laughs> I don't have the ability to fulfill these expectations, to successfully follow through on these commands. 
And I don't think anyone else does either. Paul acknowledges that in a number of different ways in his various letters. He says, for instance, that we have been saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, but rather that this is a gift of God and it is not of works. Therefore, no one can boast, or if we boast, we are boasting in the Lord. He also said, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And if we receive Jesus by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves, but by God's gift of grace, so that we cannot boast, then also our walk in Christ needs to be by grace through faith. And again, with no boasting, because all the good that we do we do because of God's grace in us. Here in Paul's greeting to this troubled church, the church of Corinth, he reminds them of this need. You see, we are called to eternally significant work, even as also the church at Corinth was called to eternally significant work, even also as Paul was called to eternally significant work. And this is a great weight upon us, an expectation. How did Paul do it? How did he encourage others to do it? Do you look at your life and say, you know, when it comes to being set apart unto Christ, I do a pretty poor job sometimes, maybe even often. When you look at your life and you look at whether or not you are actively pursuing and fulfilling the Great Commission, in fellowship, discipleship, and evangelism. Do you say, you know, I'm pretty disappointed in how I've succeeded in my personal witness with my coworkers, with my neighbors, with my near relatives who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know I often look at myself and see a great deal missing, see a great deal of failure. We can't do this without help. It's not in us. We need God's grace to pursue God's holiness and to follow through on the Great Commission. We here at First Baptist Church and Marshall are called to these sorts of things in our own lives and as a group. We are the concrete assembly of those who have been baptized in this particular place or a number of you have transferred membership, but you know what I mean. We are the group here in this place, in this time, who are baptized and working together toward these goals. Incidentally, an announcement that didn't make it into the bulletin, we're having a baptism Sunday in two weeks on the 25th. Uh, we've got three, perhaps a fourth, who will be baptized, uh, Lord willing, on that day. And it's an exciting thing to see God at work among our young people and to be able to treasure that moment together. And so we are this group called to do these things and we need to work together toward this eternal work. We need to be fellowshipping. We need to be doing this together. But how? If I am individually a pretty regular failure at this, and if many of the rest of you can acknowledge a similar kind of failure in your own lives, how are we to do this? How can we possibly succeed? Well. We can't succeed in our own strength, even as our salvation is something that God gives us by grace. So also, our useful life, our work for him, is something that God gives us by grace through faith. Here, Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, says to the church at Corinth, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this section here and look at grace and peace. But we're also going to look at the giver of these gifts. The gifts are grace and peace. But the giver is God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The question that um, some of us will look at in our small group will focus on the names of God that are in this verse. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time examining those this morning. But I want us to consider how important it is that we do the work of our lives by God's grace and according to the peace that we have from him. It is when we do the work of our lives, whether that work is family or the business that we have that we use to earn money or the, the things that we get, to get together to do here in church or any other sphere of our lives, we must be doing them by God's grace and according to his peace. Believers must access God's gifts. 
And as I've taught many times here before and wish to point out again, the value of the gift corresponds to the one who is giving it. The value of a gift corresponds to one who is giving it. What my children give me, for instance, is related to their power, related to their skill, their knowledge, and their age. In financial terms, this is very little. But in terms of love, there is no one in this room and indeed in the whole world who compare to the people in that row when it comes to giving me valuable gifts because they are my family and this is as it should be. Of all that is in this world, physical, spiritual, emotional, or whatever other measurement you might wish to suggest, no one comes close to being able to give good gifts like God. God gives the greatest gifts because he is the greatest person. What sort of gifts does God promise to give? Well, we see God giving good gifts to other people in different times, and I'd like to do a, a, very, a very brief survey of some of these things, of things that God has given to others throughout God's word. And we'll, we'll move through some passages of scripture very quickly to look at this. Uh, the first place I'd like us to turn is Deuteronomy 28. And I'm just going to read about 14 verses which give us a picture of the good gifts that God promised to give to his people as they were obedient in the law of Moses as they loved him with all of their hearts. Here it says, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flocks. Blessed shall, you be, shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake, and he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you if you keep the command that the Lord your God of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your livestock and the fruit of your ground within the land the Lord your God swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail and you shall not go up you shall only go up excuse me and not down if you obey the commands of the Lord your God which I command you this day being careful to do them and if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them these blessings are extraordinary and very detailed right some of the blessings are big picture blessings. I will bless you in, in the large parts of your life. But God designed these blessings to also involve the little parts of their life. Did you see some of those verses? I will bless you when you go out. And I will bless you when you come in. Just, you know, when you leave your house and when you come back. How many times a day do you do that? Bunches, right? I will bless you in your kneading, um, in your kneading bowl and on your basket. I'm going to bless your cooking. One of the more simple things that we do over and over and over again, right? Now, of course, these are God's promises to the nation of Israel. They're not God's promises to us. They certainly are not God's promises to any other nation. They're not God's promises to America. But they are a picture of the kind of physical blessing that God is pleased to give those who are devoted to him. God gives great gifts. Other places where we see the wonderful gifts of God. Let's go to a New Testament passage. James chapter 1 is going to give us kind of a, a picture of the gift giver that God is. James chapter 1, verses 17 through 18. 
Mm, We'll start in verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So God only gives good gifts. And this passage kind of points out the best and first gift that we receive from God, and that is that he brought, brings us forth by the word of truth. It's talking about our conversion from darkness to light, um, about being part of his family, the first fruits of his creatures. God has given us the gift of himself, of membership into his family. If you consider Jesus' sayings on the cross, and we won't go to all these passages, but in those last moments of his life, what was Jesus caring about? What was he asking his 